Hello, everyone. My name is Evan Freiberger, and we've got not just one, not just two, but maybe even three days of dangerous severe weather, unfortunately, still forecasted for the United States. And today, in this video, I'm going to be going over the latest information and giving you guys a very detailed breakdown of what is possible over the next couple of days and where we have, oops, and where we have any uncertainty or certainty over the next couple of days. But before we get started, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So starting off with today, as you can see, we do have already an enhanced risk out there for areas like Shawnee, Tulsa, Bartlesville, Wichita, and Topeka. This day is going to be pretty conditional as there are some things that can happen and can't happen, and that's mainly going to be due to a capping inversion we'll be going over a little bit more detail in that but i just want to go over the the risks first and then we'll go jump into the day but as you can see a slight risk around that extends all the way up into parts of iowa nebraska going through missouri Oklahoma, Kansas, and Texas. And then a marginal risk is around that in Texas through Dallas and going all the way up into parts of the Great Lakes and Nebraska. So we definitely have a T-bone shaped risk here. Or as some people would say, a T-bone shaped avocado. Or you could say we have an avocado colored T-bone. But the main thing is, is that today could be a dangerous day for severe weather. It actually has a pretty high ceiling. To come over to our tornado risk for today, we have a strong risk for tornadoes here or a risk for strong tornadoes all the way from Pawnee, Ponca City, Arkansas City, Bartlesville, Independence, Emporia, Hutchinson, and Wichita. If you guys live in this area, it's going to be a pretty conditional day. There's no guarantee that there will be strong tornadoes today, but it's going to be a day nonetheless that you got to watch out for. Around that is a 5% for tornadoes. It extends up through Kansas City, down through Tulsa, Shawnee, Wichita Falls, and Topeka. And then around that is a 2% that's in the green for tornadoes, and that's going to be all the way for parts of Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, going all the way down into San Angelo, Texas, Oklahoma, and parts of Kansas. Our wind risk for today is not going to be anything like we've been experiencing over the past couple of days, but there still is going to be a chance, a 15% chance, in fact, of some 60 mile per hour winds and above here in the yellow and a 5% here in the brown. And then our hail risk is pretty elevated today as well. And in fact, this could be one of our more guaranteed threats of today, no matter what happens, but a chance for and actually a 30% chance for some very large hail of up to two inches and above in this red region with these little dashes over it and then the yellow region with the dashes over it that's a 15 percent chance for that same type of hail now as you move out of that region in this yellow region that's a 15 percent chance for some quarter sized hail and in the brown is a five percent chance now starting off with our high resolution model or our h triple r model we're also going to be using other models to compare to this as we still have a couple of things to figure out for today as i push this forward eventually we are going to have a low pressure system try to form out over here into the colorado the brown and Kansas area and at first not a whole lot is going to happen today. This is most likely going to start at the nighttime hours. But as we come over here to our instability or our storm food, as you can see, the HRRR is saying that we're going to have plenty of instability all the way up from Texas into the Oklahoma area. And if we compare this to other models in the area, there is some pretty decent agreement. There is some differences. As you can see, there does seem to be enough moisture that kind of advects up to the north in most of these models. But as you can see, the shape of this instability is a little bit different. In some of them, it's a little bit skinnier and in some of them it's a little bit fatter sorry fatter but as you can see overall that instability is most likely going to be uh, in this area as this trough starts to eject into the central portion of the united states so as we can see the HRRR's understanding of this environment is pretty on par with other models but one of the things that we're going to be watching out for today where a lot of our models are still kind of in disagreement on is this right here at around 12 p.m we're going to be having quite the capping inversion, which essentially is like a bottle of water. The storm is the water and the top of the bottle is warm and drier air that is most likely going to be over the storms at this point. And some of our models have some disagreement on whether or not storms will even fire today and where they will fire. But eventually, as we move into around 5 to 7 p.m., there is a brief window here, at least according to the HRRR, where storms could get going. And as you can see, there is a quite a bit a disagreement of what and where this cap is going to be and how strong it's going to be. There are some models that have a little bit more of a capping inversion and some models that have a little bit less. So the confidence on storms firing today is still around like 50-50. But if they do get started, there is quite the environment in place for these storms. We come over to our 850 millibar winds here. You can see that we do have 50 to 60 knots 
around this area. So that's definitely enough to support some tornadic activity and potentially even strong tornadoes. And our ejecting trough here, a little bit higher up above our heads where balloons fly, when you accidentally let go of them, is going to be enough to potentially bring enough forcing into the area to initiate these storms in the first place. So if we come over to our composite reflectivity or our future radar, which this forward, you can see that the HRRR does try to fire some storms up here in northern Oklahoma. That storm could be a very large hail producer and potentially a strong tornado producer as we go into 8 p.m. And then that lifts off to the north and east and then nothing happens after that. Just one storm to watch. That's not really as bad, especially if you're talking about a widespread risk, but that one storm could do something dangerous. But here's where the disagreement starts to come in between our models. First of all, looking at the last couple of HRRR runs, just one model, you can see that it's a little bit inconsistent in where it puts these storms. You know, some of them, I mean, it has a little bit more storms and in, in some of these runs, it only has about one storm firing. So there are definitely still questions about just how many storms we're going to get today in general. Now, comparing this to other models, you can see that some have them firing over there near the Red River on the Oklahoma-Texas border. Some of them have supercells all the way from Texas going into Oklahoma. That would be a more widespread tornado event with some very large hail inside of those areas. And some of them at this time just don't have anything. Here's another model with one, two, three, four storms lined up there into central Oklahoma. That would be very dangerous given the shear and how much spin is in the atmosphere. Then we got two models after that with absolutely nothing out there. And then our last couple of models, one has the same storms over there in Kansas and the Rufus model, which is a new model that we have available, is showing storms down here in Texas and that one up there in Kansas. These ones, all of these storms have tornadic potential with these ones down here near Texas potentially having some strong tornado potential. The big question is, where do these storms fire or do they even fire at all? And that's why today is going to be a very conditional day. But if any of these storms can fire, the environment is primed for tornadoes. Let me tell you, this is the significant tornado parameter. Pretty much anything above three, you got to be watching out for some strong tornadoes. And look at this. We have values all the way up into the fives and sixes. And looking across our models, you can see that there is even disagreement about the environment a little bit, but most of the models are saying, yeah, there is quite the tornadic environment here where we could get even a, a, a pretty strong EF3 and above tornado today if these storms get started. But again, there are still some models that says nothing's going to happen. There's still some big question marks today. This is going to be more of a wait and see kind of day watching the radar and watching that mesoscale data before the event starts. And then once those storms start to bubble up and where that's when we're going to really start to get an understanding of who's going to be in a tornado risk and who's going to not be. But essentially, if you're in this enhanced risk right here, you should definitely be weather aware today, watching along with your favorite weatherman to be trying to figure out where these storms are going to fire. Now, going into tomorrow, we have yet another even more dangerous day on the horizon. You can see we have an enhanced risk extending into parts of Louisiana, Texas, going into Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, Tennessee, Kentucky, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Michigan, and Wisconsin. Around that, we have a slight risk. That's a two out of five for severe weather. It extends all the way from the Great Lakes down through the Ohio Valley in the Midwest through the Tennessee Valley and then down into Dallas, Texas. And then around that, we have a one out of five in the green that extends a little bit farther out than that. Now, there are still some questions about this day as well, but the background environment no matter what kind of storm mode we get is going to be dangerous. So I wouldn't necessarily rule out a little bit of a red area or a four out of five issued for this day, but there's still some things that we've got to work out uh, on this day as well. Let's go ahead and dive into that. Before we do, let's look at our risks. As you can see, we do have a strong tornado risk out here all the way from Arkansas going through Mississippi, Tennessee, Missouri, Southern Illinois, Indiana, and Southeast or Western Ohio and parts of Kentucky. We're going to potentially have a decent amount of storms out of this area that could tap into a pretty volatile environment if everything just lines up just right. We're going to be kind of getting a glancing blow from a low pr pressure system, so there is some room for storms to not be as active, but in comparison to our last storm event, some of our kinematics are a little bit stronger this time around. So we're going to be teetering more towards stronger tornadoes if we do get storms tapping into the environment that is available in this region. Around that, we have a 5% for tornadoes from the Great Lakes down through the Midwest, Ohio Valley, down close to Dallas, but not necessarily over 
Dallas. And then we've got a 2% in the green around that. So there's a large area where folks need to be watching out for that potential uh, for tornadoes. Coming over to our wind risk, as you can see, we also have another significant wind risk in areas that kind of dealt with that the last time. We've got a 30% chance here for some 75 mile per hour winds and above in this dashed red region, a 15% chance for that same thing in the yellow dashed region. And then around that in the yellow undashed region, we have a 15% chance for 60 mile per hour winds and above. And then in the brown region is a 5% chance for that. Also, hail again is going to be an issue with this storm. You can see that we have another red and yellow dashed region for 30 and 15% chances of seeing two inch hail and above in the yellow region is a 15% chance for that quarter sized hail and above in the brown is a 5% chance. So going back over to our HRRR model, pushing it through today and then going into tomorrow, you can see that by around 5 a.m. tomorrow, we're going to have quite the line of storms over here into the Oklahoma, Missouri, and then going up into Iowa and the Great Lakes region. As I continue to push this forward right into about 7 to 8 p.m. here, we start to see a lot of little blue dots down here in the southeast. There very well could be some confluence bands down here, and some of these blue dots could eventually mature into some storms that could be dangerous. Also, some more discrete to semi-discrete storms could form over along this boundary here near Arkansas and Missouri. But let's go look at our environment right now in this area before we get uh, looking at the storms. So looking at our 500 millibar winds, you can see that a lot of our forcing and some of our spin in the atmosphere is really gonna be relegated over here into the Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky, Ohio Valley area uh, as we go into about 11 a.m. on this day. Setting this day, for what could potentially be a very dangerous tornado day. And as you can see, over in our 850 millibars, this is going to be one of our main differences in between the last storm that we had. Not only that, we have a lot more of an organized low pressure system up here as well. So some more stronger winds are going to be associated with this storm too. But overall, I mean, we have anywhere from 50 to 60, 70, almost 80 knots of lower level shear uh, along this corridor here. And any storm that gets fired and can stay semi discrete to discrete or maybe even in a cluster of storms, you could potentially see a strong tornado. So that's why we have a pretty expansive risk for strong tornadoes on this day. This is not going to be like Sunday where it was, you know, we didn't really have a whole lot of shear. So even though we saw some, you know, more discrete storms, we didn't really get too many stronger tornadoes. Today, we're going to have, a, or not today, but going in tomorrow, we're going to have a lot more wind shear. And so if we do get any of those discrete to semi-discrete cells, it's going to be a dangerous day. And if we come over to our other models, you can see that there is some pretty good agreement that this year is going to be in place. Almost every model is saying so. So the spin is going to be there. There is a little bit of differences in between our models. We're kind of getting a glancing blow from this low pressure system up here. If we take a look at this, kind of push it off. This thing kind of rockets uh, out of the United States pretty darn quickly. So our forcing uh, is going to be pretty weak in, in, in this region. And sometimes that can allow for more discrete supercells, but that can also mean that you have storms that struggle to mature uh, in the environment. We come over to our models you can see that there is still is a little bit of inconsistency on just how much of that shear kind of pushes into this area with the RFS uh, a little bit more to the east than most of our models. So it's a little bit of an outlier in terms of that forcing coming over this area. But it is something that we do have to watch out for, a scenario that could certainly still be possible. Coming over to our storm food here, you can see that that's not going to really be a problem. As this goes up to the north, you can see that we have a wide warm sector here where if any discrete storms can fire a little bit further out in front of that frontal boundary, we could easily see some semi-discrete to discrete storms with this much of a wide instability axis. Now, comparing that to some of our other models, you can see that it's pretty consistent across the board, except for the RFS, a little bit slower to bring that moisture in the area, but eventually it does. But overall, this is definitely a day where it looks like all of the ingredients are coming into place uh, for some significant severe weather. Looking at our lapse rates as well, which is gonna be kind of dictating our hail risk, you can see that we have about around seven to eight degrees Celsius out in front of this storm. That's going to be plenty. Have those strong updrafts and to potentially have large to very large hail. So that's why there's a pretty big large hail risk out there. And healthy updrafts also mean mature storms, which means pretty elevated threat here for some strong tornadoes. This could be a dangerous day. There still are some questions, though, on storm mode and just how much of a glancing blow that we're really going to get from that low pressure system that kind of rockets off to the north into Canada and how long that environment sticks around for. So as we push 
this out of 12 p.m. and then into the daytime here, the HRRR does fire a lot of little discrete cells out here out in front of the main cluster here. There could definitely still be a stronger tornado risk in here, but it's going to be fewer and far in between given the fact that there's a lot of storms kind of competing for the same environment. If this is all we're dealing with, then that's pretty much the best case scenario for this day as the environment is very volatile. But as you can see, these storms out in front, they're a little bit on the smaller side. Maybe some of these could mature and produce a stronger tornado, but they're definitely struggling. And that's because the HRRR has more of a glancing blow. That forcing doesn't quite make it that far out in front of where this glob of rain is going to be. But if any of these storms can mature, widespread strong tornado activity can be possible still. So we have to still monitor the trends. We're still about 41 hours for this event. We'll probably have a better understanding tomorrow. But let's go take this and compare it to some other models and to see how these different glancing blows will affect this storm. So here is the and the M pass model. And you can see that we do have some mess back here. Not really a whole lot of discrete cells out there, but some of them, uh, you know, initially before we get those storms to kind of congeal, there are going to be a chance here for some mature cells out over here. But again, that forcing is just not strong enough to kind of make those become mature. So, you know, there's definitely going to be a tornado threat if any of these can mature. And that's what we're going to be watching for our trends back over here. Still potentially a strong tornado threat, but it's going to be fewer far in between given how much of a cluster we have of our storm mode back over in this region but there will certainly still be some chances there for some strong tornadoes with the environment that we have it'll just be not as widespread now coming over to the nam 3k model which is you know i really don't take this model too seriously to be honest because it it just has kind of always has like a wonky view on things but overall as we move into around 4 to 6 p.m it does show some storms starting to fire on this northern mode of this line here some of them discrete semi-discrete gotta watch out for that as again any discrete to semi-discrete storm will have the highest chance of producing the worst kind of tornado so we definitely got to keep an eye uh, on these trends here and the one that had kind of the least or the most of a glancing blow from our system shows us our worst case scenario out of this if i push this all the way in you can see that we have one two three four five six more semi-discrete to discrete storms in this area even some discrete storms all the way up there into parts of illinois and every single one of these storms could produce a strong long track and maybe even a violent tornado there so just how much we get in terms of forcing out in front of this main boundary is going to dictate how tomorrow will play out. But man, let me look at this. Going into 5 p.m., almost every single one of these storms would have a possibility of producing a strong tornado. This is the worst case scenario. This would be a major tornado outbreak. Comparing this to other models, you can see that there's no agreement on this yet. So this is what we got to watch out for. Do we lean more to this scenario as we get closer? Or do we lean maybe more to like a scenario like this where it's a line of storms, not a whole lot of mature discrete cells? This is why we don't have a moderate risk right now because there's still a lot of uncertainty, but this is pretty much what we need to watch and one of our biggest failure modes uh, for tomorrow. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it, and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll be seeing you guys tonight for another live stream covering our avocado-colored T-bone strong tornado risk today. Anyways, see you later. Peace.